Okay, so empirical formulas. Empirical formulas are just formulas that are written out where all the subscripts are reduced down to their lowest possible value. So if like they're all even, you divide everything by two and you get down to the lowest ratio possible. And we kind of worked when we wrote out formulas, there were times where we reduced everything down because there were there was like would be like well, one of them would be mg instead of having mg2o2 we'd write mgo so that would be an example of an empirical formula um, there's another example here bh3 versus b2h6 which one's the empirical formula what do you mean the simplified one yep the first one so the first one is the empirical formula the second one is called the molecular formula If you try to find how many atoms or a molecule. If you figured out molecules, they'd be the same. But if you wanted to know how many atoms of boron was actually in there, then you'd have different answers probably. No, you wouldn't because the molar masses would be the same or different. You know, when you have molar masses, they'd be different. So then it would end up, you'd get the same answer. Yes, and we usually use empirical formulas. Um, so we are going to learn how to use percent composition values to make an uh, empirical formula. And this is basically the two steps here. You convert your percent composition into mass composition. We're going to assume that we have 100 grams of a compound. So if 25% of this compound is made up of carbon and we have 100 grams, how many grams of carbon do we actually have? So if 25% of this compound is carbon and we have 100 grams of the compound, how many grams of carbon? 25 grams. So it's going to be a simple, by assuming that we have 100 grams of the compound, it's going to be a simple conversion right there. And then we're going to convert mass into moles and then you will Simplify them, so we're going to divide by the smallest amount of moles to make a ratio. And that ratio will become the subscripts in our empirical formula. Now, um, if we get our ratios to be like 1.5, that is not close enough to round. You have to be... I would say like from 0.8 or higher or point one or lower to round. Otherwise, you're going to have to multiply to get it equal. Like 1.5, you'd multiply by 2 to get it to a whole number. And we'll go through an example and we'll show you what that means. So here is a problem. So quantitative analysis shows that a compound contains 32.38% sodium. And that the sulfur and oxygen is we're finding the empirical formula. So if we have 32.38% sodium, how many grams of sodium are we going to assume we have? If we have 100 grams of that compound, 32.38 grams of sodium. So right, all this is working here. So how many grams of sulfur would there be? 22.65 grams of sulfur and how much oxygen? 44.99 grams of oxygen, yes. It's thinking. There we go. So what are the numbers again? 32.38. And then 44.99. All right, so we need to find what's our next step, I guess. So we're going to convert grams into moles. 
So one mole of sodium has how many grams? Twenty-two point nine eight from the periodic table. Mm -hmm. Okay, sulfur is thirty-two point oh seven. So someone do these calculations for us, so we, when we come back to them, they're done. Oxygen can because it's point nine 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 something. Um, so. Mhm. Mm okay. So what's the first one? Okay. It's a one point four one. How about the next one? You divide, right? Yep. You divide. Point seven one. Good. So there's our moles of all the compounds or all the elements. What was the next step? Number three. Divide. So do we divide by the smallest number of moles? Which one? Okay, so we're going to divide each of them by 0.71 because we need to make it a ratio of moles. And when you make a ratio, you're dividing, right? So this one is going to be 1. This It's the smallest one of the three. What? Top one? These are going to be moles divided by moles, so there's no units for this. Oh, that's not right? It should be pretty close. And what about the last one? Three point something. I'm guessing. Or three point two point nine six. Okay, so now, what's the next step? Step four, what does it say? Round to the nearest whole number. Now these, since they're like 1.9 something, that is close enough that we can round. So what did this round to? This would be two. What would be the bottom one? Four. So this is two. And this is four. So these are going to be our subscripts now. So we'd have Na. What would be the subscript? Two. And S, one. And when there's one, we don't have to write the one. And then O, four. Mm -hmm. So that would be your empirical formula. What would be the name for that formula, that compound? Sodium sulfate. Sodium sulfate. So the two becomes this subscript here. The one, you don't really have to write a one as a subscript. Four comes down here to four. What if you put oxygen first? What if It's okay, but do it in the order they give you because they probably give it to you in a specific order. That makes more sense because now when we look at this, you should see. Sodium is the cation, and then SO4 is an anion, sulfate. No. The ACT, the science ACT part, is just reading graphs and charts. It's not based on what you know about science. The first step was when we took the percent and converted it into grams, so we got these numbers. Second step was we divided by grams to get our mole values. Third step, you divide by the smallest number of moles. 
and then you round, then we rounded. Okay, we have another problem, don't we, after this, or not? Okay. So analysis of a 10.150 gram sample of a compound known to contain only phosphorus and oxygen indicates a phosphorus content of 4.33 grams. So really, they've already given us the grams of phosphorus. We don't have to convert it into grams. So we can start with 4.33 grams. Or 4.433. Okay. And then how much oxygen is there? Yep, because we only have two elements and the total is 10.15. So how many grams of oxygen? Okay, what's our next step? Now we have grams. because we have a 10.15 gram sample and we know it's made up of only phosphorus and oxygen and we know how much phosphorus there is so the other whatever is left is oxygen so we're going to do what we're going to convert to moles 30.97 off the periodic table yeah So how many moles of each? Anyone have the first one? Okay, and second one? So and then what's our next step? Yep, divide by the smallest one, so 0.14 is our smallest one. So this will be 1. What do you get for the bottom one? 2.5? Now, this is a good example. 2.5 is right in the middle between 2 and 3, so we can't round it. We're going to multiply it by a certain number. What number could we multiply it by to get it to a whole number? Well, multiply it by a whole number. 2. If we multiply it by 2, what do we get? 5. So we have to multiply both, right? So if we're going to multiply this one by 2, we have to multiply this one by 2. So we get a 2 and a 5. So that's why if it's like 1.1 something, that's probably close enough that you can round. If it's like 1.8 something and the higher, then it would be close enough to round up. So 1.1, like 0 0.1 or lower, you can round down. 0.8 or higher, you can probably round up. Yeah. You should, I mean, realistically, you should be able to see, it should be an easy multiplication to find, like a 0.25 or 0.75, something where you're going to figure out, oh, I need to multiply by a certain number to get it to the whole number. So our empirical formula would be P2O5. Point 0.1 or lower and point 0.8 and higher, probably, around there. Okay, then... The other formula, other than the empirical formula, is the molecular formula. 
And that's when we have um, all of the, like they aren't reduced down into their simplest whole number ratio. So you're going to have to figure out um, the molecular formula has a certain molecular formula mass. We have an empirical formula mass, too. So you take the two masses. So once you find an empirical formula, find its molar mass, add it up from the periodic table. They will usually give you a molecular formula mass. They'll say this compound has a molecular formula mass of 180. So you're going to compare those two numbers. You get the same number. If not, you're going to divide, see how, much, how many times larger is the molecular formula than the empirical formula. Then you're just going to multiply the subscripts by, all the, by that number. Um, experimental formula mass may be is the same as the molecular formula mass. They may use that vocabulary. <clears throat> so using our same empirical formula from the last problem, we found it to be P2, P2O5. But in the lab, it shows that the molar mass of this compound is actually 283.89 grams per mole. So what's the molecular formula? Let's find what's the empirical formula mass of P2O5. So phosphorus was 30.97. Multiply that by 2. Then add it to 5 oxygen, so 5 times 16. So we have 2, 2 times 30.97 and 5 times 16. Add those together. One forty one point nine four. So that's grams per mole. So is that equal to eighty three point eight nine? Yeah. No. So we need to figure out what do we need to multiply to get it equal or pretty close to two eighty three point eight nine. Probably multiply by two. Check it just to make sure. What do you get when you multiply that by two? Grams per mole. Okay. Two eighty three point eight eight. That's close enough. So we multiplied by 2, so if we need to find the molecular formula then, we're going to multiply all the subscripts by 2. So our molecular formula would be P, P4, O, 10. Yep. So that would be the molecular formula. What? <laughs> this is a 2. What? Yeah, it, it messed up, and so then sometimes it just puts a random line places. So it's two times right, because we have two phosphorus plus five times 16. Do we have another? We have a couple more problems. Um, to determine the Molecular formula of the compound with an empirical formula of CH, so there's our empirical formula already. Formula mass is 78.11. So CH, carbon's 12.01, hydrogen's 1.01, so it's 13.02. 13.02, is that close to 78? No. What are we going to have to multiply by? By 6? Here's one way you can determine what you multiply by. You can take that divided by 13.02, or you can just start plugging in numbers, 13 times 2, 13 times 3, 13, whatever you want to do. But you guys say this is a 6? That's pretty close to 6, yep. 5.99 something. So what would the molecular formula be? C6H6. Okay, now this sample has a formula mass of 34, so that is the molecular formula weight. And it has 0.44 grams of hydrogen and 6.92 grams of oxygen. Ooh, it doesn't give us the empirical formula, so we need to find the empirical formula first. So let's go through our steps, 0.44 and 6.92. What do we need to do first? Change it into moles. So 
go to our values here. Point four four. I mean, it should be pretty close. And what for the second one? Point three. Point four three. So we're going to divide by the smallest, so we're going to divide by 0.43. I'll bet they're both, that top one's probably close enough to 1. That we'll have 1 and 1. Is it, I mean, divide it out, let's make sure, but it should be 1.023, yep. So we can use 1. So our empirical formula is just HO and that would be 1.01 times our plus 16, so 17.01 as the molecular or empirical formula mass. And what does it tell us our molecular formula mass is? 34. So is that? That's not close. So you're, I'm going to say versus 34, just so that we know we're comparing these. We're going to multiply by 2, so that means our empirical formula, is, our molecular formula is what? Do you guys know what H two O two is? Yes, it is. H two O two, right? H two O two. It's not working here. 